All right. Hopefully this next part here is going to be a short part. I uh, just thought I'd do a short follow-up video. I've begun the layout of the chassis. So here's our chassis. And I just want to show you the steps that I've gone through so far. So the first thing you want to do is get some graph paper. And you can get pieces of graph paper and just tape them together to the size um, of the uh, chassis that you have. And then just kind of overlay it like I did here. And what I do is, again, this is the, one of the important things of laying your amp out. You sure don't want to do this. Uh, you don't want to cut holes and then find out you should have moved something around. So what I did was I took all my components out. And I'll just give you an example. So, for instance, for the choke coil, you know, I set it on here. And then I drew my footprint of it. And I just kind of set all the components in here in such a way that I could see how they fit. Now remember, once again, my rule about keeping tubes away from the transformers, making sure the, the uh, transformers are lined up. Okay, so those will go that way. The outputs will go that way. Chokes and power will go this way. I have a nice separation between everything. I shouldn't get any crosstalk. My vacuum tubes have plenty of breathing room around them, as you can see. So once you get everything laid out, trace it out. And if I didn't show you this in a previous video, I'm going to show you a couple things that are pretty handy to have. And these are little drawing templates. If you don't... Um, have CAD software to, you know, to, to draw out a schematic, or let's just say that you you don't want to bother with using CAD. Um, these are great little things. They're, they're just little tracing templates. Now this one here is specifically for electronics, and you can see it's an older one. And uh, if you look here, there's the manufacturer and the part number on it. And you can order these on eBay. You can order them. You can pick them up at office stores. This one I think I just got at Staples. And it's just uh, has some basic drawing templates that I use. Okay, this one's actually for uh, for drawing like rooms and houses and so forth for drafting. But the circles and all the little shapes are quite handy um, for drawing these things out. So I use these to make things a little neater. So basically, make your, make your paper the same size as your chassis. Draw everything out like that. Now, after you do that, what I did was I went ahead and I made a copy of it on standard paper. And of course, it crops a little bit off, but again, I don't have anything drawn on these ends, so it's not important. And this is my one I'm going to write on. So I did this. Then I scanned it into a JPEG, and I flipped it, and you know, horizontally, end for end. And I came up with something like this. And you can see all the words and everything are backwards. The reason I did that is when you flip your chassis over, you're working from the bottom. You want to be able to view these components from the perspective of you looking at it from the bottom and the perspective of looking at it from the top. Okay, This gives you a better visualization. Now, once you do that, you can take this and you can start drawing in, just rough roughing in some of the components. So as you can see, we have our schematic here. And we have the horizontal output transistor. This is going to be our voltage regulator. We have those big CAN capacitors that are going to be mounted. We have the Zener diodes and the resistor. We have this capacitor. We have the tube here, your um, rectifier tube. And I just kind of sketched it all in there. Now this doesn't have to be the neatest thing. This is just a map. This is just something for you to follow, give you an idea when you're putting this thing together, how it's all going to work. Okay. So 
this helps you get the power supply laid out. Power supplies by far take up the most real estate on your chassis. Um, they really do because of the spacing they need, because of the big transformers, the heat of the tubes, the great big capacitors. So if you can draw that out and make it fit in the section that you allocated for it, the battle is halfway won. All right, you're, you're almost done. Now this here, I'm going to finish this. I'm only part way through this whole thing, but I'm going to finish and I'm not going to draw every component on this. Um, you could. If, it, you know, if, if you thought that you needed to, you could. But all I am going to do is maybe add a couple of the terminal strips, as you can see there. And, you know, I took the terminal strip, I held it down, just kind of traced around it, just to get an idea of what they look like and how much space they take up and how crowded it's going to be once I get it in there. So I may put, you know, one here, one here, maybe one here, and then maybe two smaller ones here and here. And, you know, maybe like this size. I'll put one here, put one here, something like that. And then my three wider ones, one, two, three. And that'll give me plenty of terminal strips to work and connect all of my connections uh, for, for the components here. Once we do that, I mean, you pretty much ha have an idea of how the amp's going to be laid out. The rest is all down to just putting it all together. All right. So that's where I am right now. That's at least this is how I do a, a scratch build amp like this. Um, I have gotten in most of the components. I just got an email today that the uh, output transformers actually shipped today. So I should have them. Uh, within the next couple of days so I can actually start drilling these out okay so when we start actually cutting the chassis and drilling everything out and mounting the components uh, we'll do another part to this series and uh, we actually can see this thing start come, to come together uh, the other thing I did get in was for this loudness circuit this is a really odd uh, switch. It's a uh, really not odd when you look at it like this. It's just a DPDT, double pull, double throw. However, you have two channels. So really you need four pull double throw. So four PDT and just because of the way this goofy amp was already laid out when I got it, I have two mounts for pots. Okay? not for switches and it came with two little knobs that go on there so really what I thought was wow if I only could find something that would be a 4 PDT that would fit in there and lo and behold for a couple dollars I found this it's a 4 PDT rotary switch it's just two position clicks one way and the other and you can see your four poles and you're normally open normally closed on each side and this will mount right inside one of those mounting holes perfectly. And uh, it just so happens that the shaft is the correct size for the one hole. And the, uh, the volume pot is the exact right dimension for the other hole. So it'll fit perfectly and it'll look like it was meant to be. So I was really happy with that, especially for the price. So there we are. And that's where we are right now. And when uh, I get the transformers and start cutting the holes in the chassis and mounting all the sockets and so forth and the components, um, we'll do another another part. But uh, this ends part three. Nice short one. Hopefully uh, this one won't put you to sleep like the first two. And uh, more to come later. Thanks.